If you own a sailboat or are thinking about buying one, chances are you've heard the name Yanmar. For decades, Yanmar has been the go-to brand for reliable marine diesel engines, especially for sailboats. But what makes Yanmar engines so popular? Are they really as bulletproof as people tend to claim they are? And what do you need to know to keep one running smoothly? Let's break it down in this video. Now let me preface this by saying my current sailboat does not have a Yanmar. It has a modern Volvo, which actually has a lot in common with the modern Yanmars as well, but it doesn't change my admiration for the Yanmar name. First, a little bit of background. Yanmar is a Japanese company that's been around since 1912, and they've been building diesel engines for marine use since the 1930s. Today, Yanmar engines are found in everything from fishing boats to sailboats to construction equipment. But in the sailing world, they've carved out a reputation for producing these compact little reliable and relatively simple diesel engines that just seem to run and run and run. If you've been around sailboats, especially from the 1980s onwards, you've probably seen a few of their common models. The 1GM, 2GM, and 3GM series. These are the old school, raw water cooled or fresh water cooled if you're lucky, naturally aspirated diesels known for simplicity and reliability. They became the workhorses of the cruising world. Then there's the 3YM and the 2YM series that replaced the old GMs. They're modern, compact and quieter with better emissions and performance. Then the 3JH, 4JH and 4JH CR lines. These are the larger engines usually found in 35 foot and up sailboats. The latest versions of these use common rail fuel injection for better efficiency and reduced emissions. And the newer 4LV engines designed for even bigger sailboats and light commercial boats pushing anywhere from 150 to 250 horse with electric controls and common rail fuel systems. Some things to consider about the older engines. For a long time, they didn't have glow plugs. If you have an older model with no glow plugs, they rely solely on compression to get running. So when you hit the key, they can spin and spin before they start building enough heat and compression with just spinning on the starter. Newer models do have glow plugs, so you would instead hold the key in the glow plug position for a few seconds and then start it and it should fire right up with the assistance of the glow plugs. The moral of this story is if you have the older non-glow plug engine, takes a few extra revolutions to start. It's okay, it's not broken, it just doesn't have the benefit of glow plugs, so it's just spinning a little extra before it gets started. Also, we should talk about common rail versus direct injection. The old engines were direct injection, which was simple and reliable, but in the quest for more fuel efficiency and higher emission standards, most engines today, not just Yanmar, basically everyone, are not direct injection anymore. Instead, switching to common rail. This means a super high pressure pump jams the fuel into a fuel rail where it's stored at a very high PSI, and then each injector is computer controlled to fire with the highest efficiency standards and better emissions control. But the key words there were computer controlled. Common rail, which is more efficient, is also more complicated. There are a lot of sailors out there that prefer the old direct injection engines because they're so much simpler. So if you have an old one, don't think that you need to repower just to get newer technology. You might prefer the older one anyway. The key features and kind of technical details, let's dive into what makes a Yanmar engine tick. The diesel reliability. Yanmar sailboat engines are nearly all four-stroke direct injection diesels. They're designed for continuous operation at low RPMs, perfect for motoring in and out of marinas or pushing through rough seas when the wind dies. The cooling systems. Older models like the GM series sometimes came with raw water cooling, meaning that seawater is pumped directly through the engine to cool it. It's simple, but corrosion can exist over time. Most modern Yanmars use a heat exchanger and freshwater cooling system where the seawater cools a closed loop of antifreeze that sees the engine. The seawater never sees the engine. That improves longevity in the engine. Fuel systems, older Yanmars, like we mentioned, traditional mechanical injection, which is simple and field serviceable. 
Newer engines, especially the common rail models, use electronic fuel injection. That provides better efficiency and lower emissions, but adds that complexity, meaning more sensors and more electronics that, as we know, can fail. We should also mention gearboxes. Most Yanmar sailboat engines are paired with Kanzaki gearboxes, known for their durability. Always check the model, for instance the KM2P or the KM35A, and make sure you're using the correct transmission oil because it changes. Some had sail drives though, like the popular Yanmar SD series. Very, very popular, especially on newer production boats. Speaking of sail drives, Yanmar offers integrated sail drive units that eliminate the traditional shaft alignment headaches and drippy drip stuffing boxes. They're compact, quiet, and reduce vibrations. But be aware, sail drives require regular maintenance, especially on the seals. A leaking sail drive diaphragm can sink a boat if it's neglected long enough, so most manufacturers recommend replacement every 7 to 10 years, regardless of hours. As a sail drive owner myself, some quick pros and cons just from my experience. A sail drive pro is they don't use a stuffing box. Because there's no prop shaft protruding from the hull, you eliminate the need for the stuffing box entirely, so there's no drip, drip, drip into the bilge all the time. I guess you could have a dry bilge if you had a sail drive. Not that I think anybody does. A con is that seal I mentioned. The sail drive needs a big hole in the hull, which is then sealed with a large, thick, rubber deal that you have to replace. Manufacturers say every 10 years, but I've seen a lot of them go over 20. It's all up to your insurance company, really. My insurance company doesn't specify when to change the seal, so I do it between 10 and 15 years. And then there's the performance. There's a big argument in the racing world, pro and con sail drive. There's more drag on a sail drive, and it differs from the drag that you would get from a propeller shaft with a folding prop on the end. So my personal thoughts having owned both is, I think the sail drive is probably slower through the water, but not in a measurable way. Maintenance essentials. Like any diesel, Yanmar engines need regular care. Here are the basics. Oil changes every 100 to 150 hours or once a season for seasonal boats. Always use the oil grade recommended in your manual. Typically it's 1540 diesel engine oil. Fuel filters. Change primary and secondary filters regularly. Diesel fuel often carries water and dirt, so keep spares on board. A clog filter will stop your engine in its tracks. And the impeller, the little rubber pump wheel that drives your raw water cooling system. Replace that every season or sooner if you put a lot of hours on your motor. Zinc anodes, especially important on raw water cooled engines from the past and on sail drives because that's a lot of metal in the water. They protect your engine and sail drive from galvanic corrosion. Check them at least once a season. And the timing belt on some Yanmars. Newer models like the 3YM require a timing belt replacement at scheduled intervals, usually around 1,000 hours. And on the older ones, valve adjustment. Yanmars often require periodic valve lash adjustment, especially on those old ones. It's a technical job, and if you neglect it, it can reduce performance and efficiency and kind of get noisy when everything starts to rattle. It really isn't hard to do valve lash once you've done it once, but it can be messy. Common problems to watch out for, even the best engines have weak spots. Here's what we usually look for. Overheating, often caused by clogged heat exchangers or bad impellers or blockages in the raw water intake. Salt buildup can also restrict cooling passages over time. Very common is air in the fuel system. Yanmars are very sensitive to air leaks in the fuel lines. A loose hose clamp or a cracked fuel line will leave you stuck and the engine won't start. Learn how to bleed the system with your eyes closed. It's a must-know skill for any Yanmar or any diesel for that matter owner. The exhaust elbow corrosion. This is a Yanmar specific problem. The mixing elbow where seawater cools the exhaust gases before exiting the boat can corrode from the inside out. If you see rust streaking or hear unusual noises or lose power, inspect that exhaust elbow right away. There are aftermarket companies that pick up where Yanmar sort of fell short on that that will make you a better exhaust elbow. And sail drive seal leaks. On sail drive equipped boats, the rubber diaphragm that seals the unit from seawater must be replaced as recommended. A failure here is serious. It could sink the boat very quickly. Repower considerations. If your old Yanmar is tired or underpowered, a repower might be in the cards. And Yanmar offers a wide range of replacement engines, including electric ones now, that can often drop into existing mounts with minimal modification. But it's not always plug and play. 
because of new updates in engines like the common rail fuel stuff. Check the alignment, shaft couplings, exhaust sizing, and electrical compatibility. One tip, many boatyards recommend that if you have a Yanmar, you stay with Yanmar in your repower, especially if it originally came with it from the factory. It simplifies sourcing parts and the global support network of Yanmar makes long-term servicing it a lot easier. A lot of sailors prefer Yanmar. I would dare to say it's probably the favorite engine if you asked every sailor in the world. And there are some key reasons for that. Parts availability. Yanmar has a massive worldwide dealer network. Whether you're in the Caribbean or the Med or halfway to Fiji, parts are usually pretty easy to find. The simplicity compared to some newer electric laden engines, a lot of Yanmars, especially older ones, remain mechanically straightforward, meaning DIY friendly. And longevity. With proper maintenance, it's not uncommon to see Yanmar sailboat engines racking up 10,000 hours before a major rebuild. A few final tips. If you own or are buying a sailboat with a Yanmar, invest in the factory service manual. It is gold for troubleshooting and understanding how every piece of that engine works will help you very quickly figure out why it's not working. Spare parts, fuel filters, impellers, belts, anodes, oil filters, those should be on board at all times. Learn to bleed that fuel system, like I said, with your eyes closed and change filters. It can save your crews when all of a sudden the diesel stops. And remember, diesel engines love to be worked. Don't idle them all night endlessly just to spin the alternator. Don't run them at too low of RPM. Load them up regularly to keep carbon buildup at bay. So are Yanmar sailboat engines perfect? No engines perfect, but simplicity, global support, and reliability means they've kind of earned their place as one of the most trusted names on the water, if not the most trusted. In my opinion, absolutely the most trusted is Yanmar. Take care of your Yanmar and chances are it'll take care of you. While you're here, if you're interested in engines, have you seen the article we posted called Buyer's Guide 14 Electric Outboard Options? We cover every electric outboard from 2.5 to 9.9 .9 horse and cover everything from price to weight as well as electricity draw. If you're ready to do some learning today, it's a great article to check out. I'll leave a link in the description for you. Don't forget to leave a comment too. What have you found with your Yanmar? What should a potential Yanmar owner learn before they buy one? Let's help some folks out in the comments with your experience and wisdom. And give this video a thumbs up if you like sailboats. Also, don't forget to subscribe so I can see you again next time.